Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. If this is the first time you have landed on this channel, you are in the right place to learn the best way to produce the highest quality photo prints on inkjet printers by Epson and by Canon. By the way, we just had a successful live cast number two, and that went very well, and several people even donated via Super Chat, and I appreciate that tremendously. The situation is getting a little bit uh, iffy with the add revenue as the system is really getting very picky about what is deserving ads and what does not deserve ads so we have to find other methods of revenue generation and again on livecast super chat is a one way and of course paypal and of course patreon membership and of course also using my direct amazon ordering page just tell me what you need i will add it on there and if you just go ahead and order what you're going to order anyway that will generate a certain amount of income for the channel we'll be able to survive and not have to worry about the uh ad situation but let's get away from that and begin the subject of the video a person has a very nice monitor and an x ray i1 display pro calibrator and he wants to know whether it would make a difference whether he calibrates his monitor now and then proceeds to edit his images or waiting until the printer arrives, which will not be until next year. Not at all, really. You can calibrate your monitor, which you should do anyway, whether you actually do photo editing or video editing or any kind of editing. It would just make things look better and truer and more correct to begin with. So it's always a good idea to calibrate a monitor. But in this case, he wants to know whether it will make a difference in his images once he gets his PA-100, which is what he's shooting for. So when I get my printer and open an image and I edit it before I got the printer, how do I ensure that what I edit will print out as it looks on the screen? It should. It should. Whether you got the printer first or whether you got the monitor first, as long as the monitor is calibrated, which you would have done anyway, you should have a system that is reproducing those values of that image correctly and sending those correctly reproduced values to the printer. If you have verified that your printer can produce a perfect result from a standard unedited image, then those images that you're editing, pre-editing now, say months and months before your printer arrives, should be fine. You should not have to do anything other than possibly soft proofing those images with the ICC profile for the papers that you are going to be using. And you could make some um, mild adjustments. In other words, you edited an image and then you soft proof it or you do not and you save it as when you come back to print those images, you should always begin by soft proofing that particular initially edited image, view it through the ICC profile, determine what adjustments you have to make, and then you can save that or print it directly from soft proofing uh, mode. And you should be able to get a decent, very decent print. Remember that you're not going to ever match the monitor. It's impossible to do so completely, 100%. You can't. So he also wants to know, he has the printer now, but chooses a different paper type a year down the line. How do I ensure that the image on the screen matches the output? Well, if what you are editing is correct because you used a calibrated monitor, see, if your monitor is not calibrated, you can't really edit accurately. What you see is not really what the values are because the monitor is not calibrated, it's off is off so you have to have it brought to a standard once that is standardized then you can be assured that what you are seeing is correct and when you save that image to whatever format you choose to print from 
you will have a correct image. It'll be similar to that standard image you use to test the printer's ability to produce a perfect print. So you use a different paper. All you have to worry about now is to use the ICC profile the manufacturer made for that paper. As long as you're using OEM inks, okay? That's how that works. Now, he would like to know, he says, I like to think I let Photoshop know what printer and paper profile and it makes the necessary adjustments. Photoshop is not making any adjustments whatsoever. Okay, you load up the image, you edit it. If the calibration is good on your monitor, then you print it using the manufacturer's ICC profile. That's it. Make sure that your driver is set to the correct paper type recommended by that manufacturer. If you're using a paper XYZ and it happens to be glossy, they may say to use uh, something Canon Glossy 2 or whatever. They'll give you a recommendation of the paper that you should be choosing on your drop down menu. And you can soft proof through that ICC profile, say from Red River, from Hannah Mule, from Canson, from Moab, whatever. And you look at what the rendition is through soft proofing. And it may change the way the image originally looked. And at that point, you can make adjustments, physical adjustments to the edit, and then print it. You should get a very, very close match on paper to what you see on the monitor when you are soft proofing, okay? That's the magic of soft proofing. It will tell you if you use this particular ICC profile, this particular paper, this is how it's going to look, okay? And it's never going to be as contrasty, as colorful, as full of pop as you see it when you are not soft proofing, when you're viewing it basically without soft proofing through a ICC profile. It's a little bit confusing. I have lots of videos covering that. Check my color management playlist if you want to delve a little bit deeper into that subject. Watch Andrew Rodney's uh, DigiDog or Digital Dog channel. He's an expert, far more expert than I will ever be, and he explains many things. The idea at the end of it all is to produce a print that when you take it to the monitor, it matches. If it does not match, you have to recalibrate your monitor. Your monitor's condition has to match what you output because you cannot change the way that the printer outputs. The printer is basically taking instructions from the computer and producing a print, producing colors, producing values. So whatever comes out of the printer, that's what you have to go back to your monitor and somehow or other make that monitor image or rendition of that image match what the output is. It's a little bit backwards thinking, but if you study Andrew Rodney's page, he will explain that very clearly. And what you need to do is make sure that you are viewing your finished print under lighting that matches in color temperature to the white point that you chose when you did the monitor calibration. And that is part of the calibration procedure. And so it is very clear cut the way that the software will walk you through the process of calibration. So you can choose to calibrate your monitor to a uh, standard D65, then you better use a D65 light source to examine your print. And don't let that light fall upon the screen. Isolate it from the actual screen. Work in a semi-darkened room. You view your print and you look at the monitor. You view the print, you look at the monitor. And you make adjustments accordingly, all right? So that is it. At that point, you should have a very, very close match to what the monitor is outputting. And as long as you don't change your settings or do something crazy, forget to do something, part of the workflow, you should be able to print pretty much blindfolded. I do that all the time. When I do get an, a bad result, it's usually my fault. I did something stupid, you know, along the way. So that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, this Saturday earlier, I'm going to start at 7 uh, Eastern uh, time. I think we went back one hour. So now it's the true Eastern standard time. I was corrected because I used the wrong terminology. Should have been daylight savings time. So now we're going to start at 7. That will give you 
uh, people in the UK and, and Western Europe a bit more uh, ability to maybe uh, not have to stay up till two o'clock in the morning to watch the broadcast. The, in uh, Australia, it'll just be a bit earlier, and of course, it will be able to cover all of uh, the United States and Canada without any problems. So at least I'll be able to broadcast to more portions of the world and uh, should be a lot easier for people to watch so they don't have to watch it and delayed play. They'll be able to participate one-on-one. -on -one. The subject of this next live cast is going to be refilling. Okay, that's going to be it. So please plan your questions now. It's going to be about refilling any of the top quality pro level photo printers. Please don't ask me about all-in-ones, you know, using tiny little cartridges that cannot be refilled anyway. We will cover and proceed to talk about printers such as this one, the Pro 1000, the P800, even the older 3800, 3880s, all of the Canon line Pro 1, Pro 10, Pro 100, uh, and some of the older Epsons, the R3000, P600, and so forth. So we will be covering that again. Subject will be refilling. So please plan your questions now so that we can proceed maybe an hour, an hour and 50 minutes and be able to make it as productive as possible. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like. And as always, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.